365 Days of Sport. That's it. That's 365 Days of Sport, the greatest sports radio show on the planet. It's still official, Rob. It is still officially the greatest sports radio show on the planet. These official ratings are just coming in thick oh, and fast. Unbelievable. It's about as official as uh, just anyone saying anything, as we said last week. That's it. That's all you got to do. I'm just officially a great man, uh, as oh. I've judged by myself. I've heard otherwise. Um, you're officially about the middle, I reckon, oh, mediocre. Always. Middle yeah, of the road. Yeah. That's the voice of Rob Bryce, by the way. The best mm. thing to come out of Auckland since the Viaduct. It's apparently. a pleasure to be here on a uh, Wednesday night. We're back in our usual sort of time slot. Yes. We had a week off, funny enough. We did have, we have you know, we'll, cancellations as we'll usual, but we can do it. We can do it. We're double headed <laughs> this week. Ooh. Have we got the material is the question. No. Definitely not. We've never yeah. had any This material. will be the most boring show in the history of Three to Five Days of Sport. Oh, don't say that. We've got a guest. <laughs> oh, we've got a guest. Oh, gosh. No, retract. Retract. Despite the guest, well, you know, the, the guest will be obviously the, the, the thing that will bring it into an enlightened state. Go to that, But the rest of us, you mean you? Oh, yeah. Totally uninterested. We just keep it ticking along. That's all we do. Oh, it's effortless. It's effortless. It's, every show, I'm not even, every show not even trying, <laughs> and then we just get applause. Oh. Yeah. Did you get some applause? Just like from my flatmate. Oh, good. Yeah, and my mum. Oh, yeah. about time. What about no, you? Actually, mum's, mum's not a huge fan. I think oh, really? She thinks we're a bit crass. Oh, I think she wants... She constantly thinks, what will grandma think? I think she thinks you know, you're a bit not, crass. Right. I'd try and keep my head above water here. Well, you got it. I'm trying to inject some interesting material. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, we can't just talk about sport the whole time. This isn't a sports show. <laughs> you know, the, clip, the, the title is totally misleading. It is. Yeah, we throw them right off. Indeed. What hey, happened this week? Anything special? You well, do anything? You achieve anything I'm, I'm worth mentioning? Be, do you know what? I'm not usually self-indulgent. Okay. But this week, I am going to be totally self-indulgent because... You are pretty self-indulgent, Yeah, actually. thanks yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, carry on. Um, mm-hmm. The greatest thing ever to happen in football happened on the weekend. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I saw your Facebook page took a dramatic <laughs> overhaul. <laughs> In regard to this, <laughs> the same you had the same picture for about three years, and all of a sudden it changed. <laughs> but considering four forty-five a.m. on mm-hmm. Saturday night slash mm-hmm. Sunday morning, mm-hmm. it was the worst seven minutes of my life. Yeah, because I could see the world just caving in <laughs> around me. And uh, at four forty-five a.m. after getting up at eight for once, it's it, not a great feeling. Mm-hmm. But something happened to perk me up, mm-hmm. get me out of this slump. Mm-hmm. And Apparently, memories last longer than dreams. Oh, isn't that the greatest line? <laughs> did you make that up? I did, yeah. That's actually it, half all right. It came to me at 4.49am, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it just gave me justification for staying up. Okay, so just before he hasn't even mentioned, he's talking about his football team, Newport County. Newport County. Who, by the way, this is not a, that great a triumph. They're avoiding relegation is well, what was going on here. Well, you have to put it in the bigger scheme of things. If we had got relegated... The third or fourth tier down? Yeah, tier four, yeah. yeah. Yeah, But if you get relegated from League Two into the Vauxhall Conference or Vanarama Conference or National League, whatever it's called, mm-hmm. you basically, you're into oblivion. Okay, yep. And whether we could have ever got out of that oblivion remains to Oblivion's be Oblivion's a long way to come back from. Oh, it's a big... Just ask all those people who've gone into black holes. In... They haven't heard much from them again, have No, they? that's exactly Major right. Major Tom, he wafted off. Had so, a song about him, though. So... <laughs> Yes. So 12 weeks ago, 12 games ago, I should say, Mm -hmm. Newport County were bottom of the league. 11 points adrift of safety. Right. So we say. It's two points a win? Three points a win. Three points a win. So it's a bit better, but when you're bottom of the league. It's still a fair way to go. Yeah, but you're bottom of the league for a reason. How many rounds were left? 12 games to go. Okay. But we had to make 11 points up, and Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. to get out of the Mm -hmm. relegation zone. What caused the turnaround? Well, we sacked the manager and appointed a lad from Newport to be manager. Some getting real heart, grassroots. Uh, mate, you're on the money, yeah, see? We yeah. should have thought of this long ago. Don't these so dodgy as imports. Newport County accrued points. Mm-hmm. We got closer and closer. And so the media jumped on board, and all of a sudden mm-hmm. it was the great escape. <laughs> so it came down to the Paul last. Newman and uh, Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen. Came down to the last preparing. day of the season. We got, we, in fact, we had a decent run. We got two points clear of relegation. But mm-hmm. on the last day of the season, us and Hartlepool, yep. that other. Titan of English mm. football. Charles Bronson have, is battling away, dealing the title with his claustrophobia. Indeed. All that stuff. I didn't realise this about mm. Hartley Paul, but they've never ever won a trophy. That's how good they are. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the last game of the season, we've got to get better than Hartley Paul's results. Sure. Now, 
on Sky Sports, mm-hmm. their presenter on a Saturday afternoon is a Hartlepool fan. In fact, he's president of the Hartlepool supporters people and all that. I see. So I've whacked this He's thing. paying attention. They, mm-hmm. they did a special program for League Two survival. What? Yeah, they did. So, look, half time in these games, mm-hmm. Newport County are one up, Hartlepool are one down. Mm-hmm. But within the space of 10 minutes of each other, it all turned around. And so I've whacked together this segment about what it meant to me at... 4.44 a.m. Saturday night. Great escape. No apologies oh, about in. it. He's in! He's in! He's in! What? Who's in? Oh, he's in! He crosses to Rooney! Rooney takes the touch, goes inside, goes past the keeper! And he's in! That's Harley Paul. Harley Paul had just scored. Oh, right. What the goal! Everybody's on the pitch, Jeff. It's oh, unbelievable, oh, unbelievable oh, scenes on the pitch. Everybody's oh, on. The ball gets cleared up front. It's two v one. Some go through. Gives it to Rooney. Still got a lot to do. Throws a dummy. Goes At this one. point in time, Notts County have just scored. They're one all with Newport. Hartley Paul have just taken the lead. This is the 83rd minute. So Newport County is down at this stage. Yeah. They've scored a goal before today. They lead by two goals to one. As it stands, Newport County going down. Bus! Bus! A Newport goal would change all that. A Doncaster goal would change all all that, I don't think I'm going to be able to bear to get through the next few minutes. But there's a great block by the centre half. It falls to McSheffrey on the edge of the box and he has a shot. And he. Oh, 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 oh scored. No. Oh, no. Note the change in tone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Brian has just scored an unbelievable goal for Newport. He's taken the ball on his chest. This is a right back. His skill in the box. He's taken on his chest. He's turned on the right footed volley into the bottom corner. The keeper's got no chance. It's a great piece of skill. And that's the winning goal. Mm. Came in the 89th minute. You know, it's a great finish. And it means that um, we're back in it once again. There are seven minutes left at Hartley, but it doesn't really matter. It only matters what happens really uh, to Newport. They need Notts County to score. That is for sure. Or all the effort will be in vain. Um, look, when you bought Candy, we might be uh, we not might not be the most polished club in the world, but one, one thing we'll always do is we'll fight. Yeah, wow. Well, the fantastic. one thing you can get from that is you mm-hmm. can polish a turd. I've, that's definitely that's what I was thinking. Yeah. and exactly that metaphor yeah. analogy. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, it's poetry. Yeah. Well done. Um, I I must uh, ask you the question. Yes. What was it like after that? Not being able to have a drink. Well, it was 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was pretty overall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Pure was, emotion. Raw. Yeah. I mean, it was real. It was really more real. It was real. It was, you know. It's better than winning. It. I tell you, the feeling is better than winning any trophy. <laughs> Avoiding relegation. And you're right. We came 90th head of 92. Yeah. And then we left it to the last minute of the last day of yeah. the season to stay fifth, up. fifth tier. What would what if you had gone down relegation? Where yeah. where would that have left? You don't the want black to know. hole. Yeah. As, as it's the said black earlier. hole and not coming out. But there well, you go. well, I'm happy for you. Thanks, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Appreciate that. Yeah. Anything else happen uh, this week? Yeah, this week. What, yeah. Hey, a uh, friend of the show, Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, Shaquille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've um, run through him a few times. He wants to be a new sheriff. He wants to be a sheriff in town. Uh, an actual sheriff? An like, actual, a real... Go through police training? Yep. He He'd be an intimidating sheriff, I He imagine. would be, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to mess with that. I mean, this is a man that thinks the world is flat still. Yeah. So you have to remember that's this. a bit of a blemish on the record. Yeah. So, um, he did an interview this week. This is not about politics for me. It's, it's something that I always wanted to do. Uh, it's, it's just about about bringing people closer together. You know, when I was coming up, people loved and respected the police, the deputies. And I want to be the one to bring that back, especially in the community that I serve. I'm a guy that speaks all languages. I can throw on a suit and have a conversation with Bill Gates. I can go in the hood and talk to the homies and talk to the children. And uh, I know how to... <laughs> Know how to run a team. You know, my style is going to be the 
to you know surround myself with guys that, that have been doing it way longer than I've done it. Surround myself with smarter people. And maybe when he surrounds himself with those smarter people, he'll stop saying the world's flat. Yeah, that's think. right. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what this has got to do with being a sheriff. I can put on a suit and have a conversation <laughs> with Bill Gates. <laughs> I can go in the hood and talk to the homies. Just give Bill a call right now. You can go, <laughs> go catch up with Bill. Yeah. You know, he doesn't care if you're wearing a suit, by the way. You know, he's a fairly open-minded lad, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm not intimidated by money yeah. and, and technological advancements. You know, I could just he, might, he might, the biggest thing against Jack getting a meeting with Bill Gates would be the fact that he thinks the world is flat. <laughs> you know, if you play that recording of Bill Gates, he, he might put you towards the back of the agenda. Yeah. I'd suggest. But good on you, Shaq. I'm sure he's making. He doesn't uh, stay in one place for too long. He no, likes to he's, move he's obviously he's obviously a bit bored, mm. Shaq, about yeah. what's going on in life. Okay, well, well, well pl- thanks for that, Shaq. Yeah, yeah, insightful as usual. I think as we go on mm. in this show mm. down the line, I think Shaq's going to provide us with uh, quite a few mm. uh, bites. Stupid man. Well, that's it. Hey, he's, um, he's best. we've talked about this. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The Beer Mile, the International Beer Mile is on this week. Yep. It's on Saturday in Melbourne. Yep. So they're trying to... They're I, gonna, think, I think I've missed the entry, haven't I? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. no, they're taking entries on the well, day. after hearing that someone actually did it in 4 minutes 4 minutes 30, 34 is the world record. That's ridiculous. Well, how's this, right? Some lad decided last week he was going to do the beer half marathon. Mm-hmm. He was going to drink one beer every mile. For okay. the half marathon. So that's probably going to be about 15. 13.1. I don't know if... You, you've oh. probably got to drink one at the start, one at the end, so that's you're probably horrendous. right. 14 miles. Why would mile. you do that? That's just pain. Yep. Emmett Farnan. Mm. He goes to Notre Dame University in the States, Indiana. But he managed to break the two-hour mark. He did it in one hour, 43, which is quite impressive without any drinks, isn't it? Yeah. So, but, so he did do the 13 beers yeah, yeah. and a half marathon in one hour, 43. One hour, 43. Which is the new beer half marathon world record? Does he stop and drink the beer, or does he? You, you ever run? Well, you've drink got to drink. while he's running. Well, you, in the beer mile, I found that you, there's a ten meter transition zone where you can drink. Ah, I see. So you probably the half marathon. You're not exactly sprinting along, so you sure. can probably just whip one down and whatever. But <laughs> just like that, this, effortless. This lad, typical American, mm-hmm. failed to check the rules of the beer half marathon. Ah, beers have to be five percent for it to count. Didn't read the small print, so he was probably drinking Coors Light. Yeah, yeah, Coors Light or something like that. Three and a half percent, even Budweiser. Just drinking water, Bud Bud Light. Bloody pointless. Yeah, yeah. The trouble is Mm. finding a five percent beer in America. You'd have to drink Guinness. Imagine running thirty. I don't think that's five percent. I've got a can right here. Shall I check? (laughs) No, no, it's in the the kitchen. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's four point something. So five percent beers, although very heavy. Yes, that would be a poor choice of beer. In the states, it'll be a malt liquor. So yeah, so that. It's um, the Beer Mile on in Melbourne on Saturday. Where's that taking place at, for those who uh, want to go and check it out? Ashburton uh, Rug- uh, Athletics Club, actually. It's on Saturday. The uh, International Beer Mile is uh, 5.30 along mm-hmm. those lines, but mm-hmm. they're doing a few other things along the way as right. well. I'm a bit of a fun one. And there's a Cider Mile as well. That's Ooh. their early one. That's for the more cultures. That's the, the, <laughs> trying to get the hipsters involved. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Can't miss the hipsters. Or there. some of the expats. Right, well, right. that's news that's for the, the news. week. Very, very thorough, very... Indeed. So community service. So once straight again. in, as we mentioned before, we mm. do have a guest today. You know, which is great. Somebody turned up. We do. Instead of cancelling at the last minute, as <laughs> we love it. We can introduce Mr. Tim Newhouse, who has just been revealed as the coach of the Box Hill Mustangs. I'm not sure why cricket teams are called Mustangs, but never mind. Uh, ladies Cricket Club, first grade in the Melbourne competition. So, mm, Tim, Tim, thanks for coming along. Absolute pleasure to have you. Welcome to thanks, the show. Steve. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Rob. Mm. How are we feeling? How how was your Wednesday evening? You're feeling astute. You feel like you're going to contribute, give it considerable more colour than what it's had so far. Well, Twenty two of us. I can suggest a beer that is five percent or more. Oh, nice! So that I can slip that in the next five minutes or so. Good, yeah, so, good, good. An American you know, beer, a Welsh beer. Oh, oh right, brains okay. SA. We have another Welsh Rexham here. Is that Lager. What we've got? Oh, Rexham Lager. <laughs> Rexham Lager. Rexham Lager, as served on the Titanic. Yeah. Oh, really? What? Yes. You serious? Yeah. That's right. It was the official beer of the Titanic. Oh, it's didn't also know that. The, this has got some history behind it. This beer. Yeah. I want to try it now. It's now the official beer of the Australian University's cricket team. Okay. Here's, a, here's one for you. Did you know a Welsh beer was the first ever? Canned beer as well. How would I know that? Well, you should. I yeah. thought you knew Only your a beer Welshman would know that. Yeah. <laughs> Fallon Royal Breweries used to invented the first ever can for canned beers mm. for the miners to take down the tin mines. Did you know this, Tim? Yeah, Beef used to run a show called 365 Days of Beer. Yeah. <laughs> and that was one of the first Before things the, yeah. he did. Before that's the gout it. plague kicked in. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, right, right. The gout plague. Mm. So, Tim, actually, why we all know you is you talked about Australian universities, and when you were based over in the UK playing cricket, 
You did start off this Australian University's representative team. Yeah, we started it in 2011, played mm-hmm. against Oxford University, mm-hmm. had a draw mm-hmm. with them, which went superbly well. Mm-hmm. And we just dragged boys who are premier cricketers at all the university clubs around Australia, mm-hmm. go to a fantastic cricket ground against mm-hmm. a very good mm-hmm. side. Yeah. play two excellent days of cricket mm-hmm. and it's just gone on from that so we play against Loughborough every year and we throw in games against Durham University or Cambridge University Oxford MCC young cricketers so it's been a raging success yeah. where, where do you excel on the cricket field what's your yeah endeavor? I'm a wicket keeper batsman but wicket, I am okay. I am no Adam Gilchrist right, but right. I would you come love, in at seven would love to have been oh he's a fairly high you know, sort of caliber player to aspire to that's right I guess if you play international cricket you could try you know you just you just strive to achieve higher score uh, 125 ooh how nice. many balls 103 ooh that's pretty that's, ra- good. that's rapid it's not bad uh, solid. Welsh Cup round 16 against mm-hmm. Denby right is this for Brimbo or is this it was for Harden my oh, the Adam, team yeah. I was at before I went to Brumbo okay yeah. What go. sort of level is that compared to your well, exploits? Well, that's um, those guys up in the north, yeah. Wales. They play in their own Premier League. There, you right. know, this is after. I mean, when I would have played up there, a lot of those north uh, northeast teams play in the Mersey League. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, before these Premier Leagues started, and same thing yeah. in South East Wales. We used to play in the Western League, which had a lot of English teams in mm-hmm. it. So uh, competition is quite strong. Isn't mm-hmm. it? Tell you what, though, there's some fantastic grounds up there, Colwyn Bay and. Uh, uh, Prestatin is a nice ground as well. There's some beautiful grounds up. Why didn't we get Wales. to Wales on our trip? Well, well, well know, we were supposed to, but yeah. I wouldn't want to go to Wales in the winter. Yeah, no you, good. <laughs> it's generally wet. Okay, bit it of is rain. The, it is officially the yeah. wettest place on earth. Yeah, quite a few fights in Newport. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, didn't you? Didn't you hear the Newport manager? Then <laughs> we're from Newport and we, <laughs> we fight. fight. That's we, it. Yes, yeah, told it straight up. Yes, well, the uh, Millennium Stadium has a roof, of course. So mm. Cardiff is doable in the winter. Yeah, yeah. permanently Moving closed. With the times. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, great stadium. Hey, have you seen this new stadium they're launching in New Zealand? Oh, how good is that? They're I've building that it later. into the harbour, and so it's going to be the, the top of the roof will be at water at level. water level. Yeah, and they're going to they're going to have a retractable roof so they can have a ferry terminal. Yeah, there on top. So the mm. the actual stadium is in the water. Yeah. So move, move with the times. Yeah. That's where we're going. New Zealand forward thinkers. No, this, well, this is not a joke. We're no, serious. This is deadly <laughs> serious. They this call is, it. This they, is not fake news. This, no, is not, this, this is not Trump. And it's called the crater. Yeah. They called it the crater. <laughs> yeah. So Tim, what's going to be the difference between you coming and playing in Wales and then coming back to Melbourne and coaching the girls uh, at Box Hill? And can you tell me why they call them Mustangs? That doesn't make sense for any cricket team. Horses are traditionally very poor cricketers. That's very true. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it is a disappointing nickname. Yeah. I'm hoping that instead of having the name Mustangs on the back, we might have the names of the players on oh, the back yeah. of their shirts. I thought that might be a radical move. No. Is a Mustang a horse? Yeah. Yes. I don't know it is a car. I assume yeah, it would, because all s- the cars are some sort of cat, some big cat. I, I've yeah. never seen what a Mustang... Mustang cars are also very poor cricketers. Okay, yes. yeah. sure. Quick yeah, between the wickets. But you yeah, struggle yeah. to get them out. They're all flashy, <laughs> yes. yeah. Burn too much oil. Yeah. CBW. Yeah. If you see the... Bad, not wicket. economical... <laughs> <laughs> oh my word yeah. if you see the badge on a Mustang by the way it's a horse like the Ferrari but ah, okay. yeah, that's a horse as well but yeah I'll look at a car one day so yes Box Hill best job in club cricket in Victoria in my opinion we've got the Australian captain playing for us we've got her younger sister Anna who is a huge talent who I think is going to play for Australia yep. I'd love to see her go and captain the Melbourne Renegades in the WBBL mm-hmm. and to have her playing against her sister Meg who's probably the greatest women's cricketer of I all got time abused. I got abused for calling the WBBL the Wobble I think it's a great name for the league the Wobble the Wobble isn't too bad maybe the Wobble mm. is a bit, is yeah. a bit mm. less yeah, disrespectful yeah, yeah. yeah I, know, I know where they're going yeah but, I mean, come That's on. That's probably what they were trying to get me to yeah, stop yeah. going. Yeah, right, right, There you sure. go. Oh, well, it's a bit of a rep over but the knuckles. you talk about Meg Lanning. Now, in all honesty, she is head and shoulders above basically everyone else in the world, isn't she, as a, as a cricketer? Oh, she's an out-and-out champion. No mm-hmm. doubt about it. And if women's cricket hadn't taken off the way it had, I would have done my utmost to bring her over to the UK and, and play in men's Premier League Cricket yeah. and earn some money that way. Yeah, yeah. She deserves to be making a lot of money out of the sport, and thankfully now she is. Is there anyone consistently bowling over the 120 these days? I remember Elise Perry, she used to uh, she used to get up there I mean, yeah. off, off the long run well, there. She was pushing it. Yeah, one of the other exciting things about Box Hill is a girl we've got there, Hayley Brennan, who's mm. only 17, 
and she's up towards 120 already. Yeah, she, right. She's going to be a seriously good bowler uh, in the coming years. Yeah. Mm. I think I was only around the 120 at, at, at oh, best. Yeah. Don't do yourself yeah. short, fella. <laughs> 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 How do the ladies go in terms of their celebration after a game? They, they big party as they go for a bit of a smash fest afterwards? Certainly at Box Hill. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, that yeah was you lead the, the way? No, I wouldn't yeah. lead the way. I'd sort of take a step back slightly. Yeah, sure. I hope uh, you give a thorough announcement before you walk in the change rooms, by the way. Yes, Is it yeah. sort of yeah, over I'd, the speakerphone? I thing? won't be going in the change rooms yeah. at all at any stage. Okay. So no. if they well, have a chat with the coach, rule. they come out. No, all above board. The strange Not, thing is, yeah. room to when I was, I was playing uh, in Norwich in one of the Premier Leagues, East Anglia Premier League, and mm. I coached the girls on uh, when I could because obviously I was playing Sundays and whatever. And I was actively encouraged to get in the change rooms with them. Right. They normally dragged me in. Okay. Not that they were interested in me, Positive the majority. Attitude. The majority bringing, of see, them. they're bringing people together. They, you know? <laughs> they were definitely this trying. This community show again. Yes. They're embracing the 365 oh, attitude. Oh, you have to know, yeah. Tim, we are pro-feminist here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Pro, for pro lots of things. Pro-feminist, yep. pro-animals, uh, pro, pro... pro cars playing cricket. Pro-homosexuality. Yep. I know, you, yep. I know pro, you love the wobble. The indigenous. And the wobble. We're pro-wobble. That's, that's proof. <laughs> Greatest Sporting Benders. It's back. Everyone loves Greatest Sporting oh, it's Benders. A, it's the best section we do. It's effortless. <laughs> Everything we do on the show, we don't even try. And it, yeah, I and can't it say shows. it enough. The show is just coming together. So, Tim, we do a segment on this show, as you well know, called Great Sporting Benders. Obviously, you played Australian universities. So I yep. did read this. See, I did research, Rob. Yeah, good. So well done. It's a theory foreign to you. Yeah. Um, and you played in North Wales, which is renowned. Obviously, Wrexham Lager to the, to the four. Great Sporting Benders. So mm. we like to celebrate people that get out on it and then play, mm-hmm. or just have a history of being, as I like to have been called in the in around Norfolk, the beer monster himself. <coughs> that was my uh, nickname that I didn't even give myself. So, Tim, you must have some stories in North Wales, surely. All I can say is that James McNeil, who's now captain of Melbourne University first, scored an absolutely brilliant century against Loughborough in a pretty heroic losing effort. He was devastated. Mm -hmm. But the following morning, he turned up wearing nothing but his boxer shorts, a Richmond Guernsey into the four-star hotel for breakfast. And he slung a hoodie over his head at one point because it was a little bit bright for him. He'd had a very big night. But I thought he scored 100. He deserves to have a big night. Yeah, I think he definitely does. How did he go with breakfast? Did he fall asleep in his bacon and eggs or something? Did he, he, did he well, I, obviously you were there because he did. Oh, <laughs> yes. There we go. I hope you went for the Bloody Mary breakfast or the, the pint of Guinness also goes no, well. No, the black, black pudding and mushrooms black and pudding, black baked yeah, beans, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, the whole shebang. Full English. That'll, that'll suit the Rich, Richmond jersey too, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did the, after he fell asleep in the... What did they do? Did they just physically drag him out or they just sort of let him do his own thing? They, well, they were really professional. Mm-hmm. Burley Court Hotel at Loughborough University. Mm-hmm. Yes, they helped him up. Mm-hmm. Helped him back to his room, helped him pack his bags, mm-hmm. and made sure he was out of the room at really? the correct checkout time. Oh, beautiful. That's far too considerate. That's, that's, that's four star I, I accommodation. Yeah, I want a bit of slapping and a bit of so, throw out the front door. Right. So. He had a few, fell asleep in his breakfast. Did he then go and play that day, or was this at the end of the match? Disappointingly, he had 48 hours to recover. Oh, so he hasn't quite filled the category yeah. that you're that's hoping. Right. It's a good one, though. Good well, one. look, um, as two Welshmen, you'll be happy to hear that uh, I've found an English person woman actually who has disgraced themselves here nice uh she played for the english rugby union team oh. her name is kaylee calloway borden the hyphenated surname is becoming more pro- popular these days it's a bit of a mouthful though the hyphenated surname it goes on a bit so she was uh out in the pump so she played for um this is for the new key queen bees but uh yeah she did play for england as well yep the headline the article reads you know when you're out oh hang on is there a headline no, there's not. <laughs> you know, you know, we're out drinking, and the seemingly limitless potential of the evening is destroyed by the spins and an untimely shot. Shot. Mm. Beautiful. You know, you know what that is? Yeah. Do I need to illustrate that for the people? You can't. I don't want you to illustrate. Okay. It. Well, they, hopefully they'll figure it out. It's, it's a, a combination cross. of two words, yes. and it's to do with your rear behaviour. At that point, you have two options. You can keep calm and carry on, as they say on the 
papyrus cards? What the hell's that? Papyrus. It's what the Egyptians used to write on, right? Okay. Papyrus. Papyrus cards. Or you can go completely batshit crazy like Courtney Love on Bath Salts, as English rugby player Kaylee Calloway Baldwin did so as she opted for the latter. After reportedly consuming five large bottles of cider, a handful of Jaeger bombs, and a tall Red Bull and vodka, the 20-year-old grew frustrated with her crew of girlfriends for not being as eager to leave the bar as she was. So naturally, Callaway Borden started smashing glasses in the ladies' room. Upon being thrown out of the bar, the rugby player satisfied her newfound thirst for shattered glass by kicking out the storefront, storefront window of a neighbouring hair salon. When police arrived on the scene, Callaway Borden was in the middle of a full-fledged meltdown, screaming incoherently and bleeding from the hands. Oh, just the hands. Oh, yeah, I think okay. she must have gone for the fist punch yeah, in the window. Yeah, definitely. After being taken to the ground in a struggle with police officers, a cuffed Callaway Borden reportedly spit on the cops <laughs> and began headbutting the concrete sidewalk. So it was, where, where did the shart come into it? Well, I think that was actually just sort of a comparison of when things oh, go bad. Oh, okay. She didn't actually do it herself. Oh, shame. Yeah. But that's a bit of a disaster. I think uh, in the end she went to, uh, in her reprimand, she was just received a bit of community service. Oh, like is that all? Oh, well. I think they said, oh, she was off chops, out of character. Yeah, typical rugby player. That usual story, these athletes are just far too fit and healthy and they have a few and it all goes to pieces. Indeed. Oh, uh, yeah. But I have just realised that rubbishing the Mustang's nickname is nothing compared to being a queen bee playing rugby. Well, that's true. B, insects are terrible rugby players. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's sure. They're generally smaller than the bull. Wasps, yes. hornets. Well, corn will do wear black and yeah. black and amber the types. Hoops. Yeah, so that, hence why they're the queen bees. But in, in terms of that, yes, I agree with you, Tim. Yeah. Insects make terrible rugby players. Yes. What, what, what do you think would be a good, uh, of the if you were to choose an insect to reflect you and your career... What would you go for there, the beef man? In terms of life, I'd be a praying mantis, but the male type because oh, um, women. Be- how can beefy be a praying mantis? Because that's, we- that's, women that's have generally very lanky insect. Yeah, but women have generally eaten me alive throughout my whole career. <laughs> so uh, in terms of that, I you know very clever. You're actually, Thanks, quite good man. at puns and plays on words. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. So, Rob, what we got next? Song that came to his head. It just so happened to be. It was the worst song in the world. It was the worst song in the world. Don't fit, and the song is shit. You're a talent list. Yeah. You suck! You suck indeed. And yes. this week on Worst Song in the World, well, I've had a bit of assistance. For, uh, my research assistant um, sent me this track, actually, because um, I was busy just doing amazing things in my life. I really uh, was most impressed by this song. Uh, right. Uh, it comes from a tennis background. Who was your research assistant on this, Rob? You. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah, say, yeah, 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 it yeah. is tennis, you're right. <laughs> and it is truly awful, considering it is professionally done. Well, obviously the idea here is uh, a very famous uh, boy band called the Backstreet Boys. Now, they've made a bit of a play on that, and they've called themselves the Backhand Boys. Now, so, Tim, listen carefully and see if you can make a head nor tail of who could be, who could make up the Backhand Boys. <laughs> Everybody needs a little time away Roger Federer <laughs> I've heard a say From each other Even lovers need a holiday Cigarette light is out yeah. now yeah. Far away from each other It's hard for me to say I'm sorry So hard I just want you to know You can hear his accent Roger here Roger again <laughs> Hold me now I really want to tell you I'm sorry I could never let you go After all that we've been through I will make it up to you I promise to And after all that's been said and done You're just a part of me I can't let go Bit of auto-tune in there That is the bit Yeah Okay, now the first question 
question I, I have to ask yes. about that. Is is that a piss take or are they seriously like thinking that they've got the, a, the strange going thing for it? is it was a there was a wet day at one tournament. In fact I think it was in Australia. Yeah. And kind of guys got together mm-hmm. and sang a song and somebody said, Oh, yeah. You should do this, this is properly. Yeah. Tim, you knew immediately about Roger this Federer. one. You, yeah. you've, you've, I you've recognised Roger's voice just yeah. from hearing him in so many interviews. Yeah. And unlike a lot of people who have quite ordinary mm-hmm. speaking voices yeah. but sing like an angel, right? Roger Federer sounded like Roger Federer doing an interview. <laughs> except in this case, he was saying, I really want to tell you I'm sorry. Indeed. I, wonder, he, I hope he started crying while he's doing it. Oh, he was pretty yeah. emotional. Very emotional. <laughs> it's a horrendous power ballad from the 80s. Oh, it is horrendous. By yeah. uh, Chicago as the original yes. band, of course. So they're on the back foot immediately. Yeah. I was hoping to, to hear Novak Djokovic. Well, there was no sign of Novak enough, whatsoever. No, in the middle of that song, and the bloke comes in and goes, Tell me now! That's Novak That's Djokovic Novak no. as, as a guest appearance wow. doing that one line. Because yeah. Oh, well, I'm now thrilled. So they're singing the song, and then it cuts to Novak sitting in a, in a room in a big comfy chair with his feet on the desk. And So the other two in it are Tommy Haas and Gregor Dimitrov. Oh, Tommy Haas got in there. Yeah. It's a real sort of Euro- Eurovision effort, almost. But nice. They, yeah. they should think about entering uh, they'll probably win just because they're tennis players That's this weekend by they the would way. probably it? win because it may well be the best song in <laughs> Eurovision <laughs> yeah. it should have been on our list shouldn't it for 365 what? days of sport Eurovision Eurovision is a, yeah yeah it's that, a song contest that way we would chuck in MasterChef at the same time hey hey <laughs> Don't swear on this show. Your mother's already told you. Well, so, I think it's new segment time. Yes. Yeah. We have a brand new segment. It's exciting. It is exciting too. I'm Tim, excited. Have you, have you ever wanted to be a champion of the world, Tim? Have you ever wanted to be... Has that come across your... Uh, that label? I think Beefy and I were close to becoming mm. foot, oh, jo- foot, foot golf champions of the world recently. Mm-hmm. We were just beaten in the yeah. second place. Beefy we hosted were. a foot golf tournament recently. Yeah, me and, and Tim he, uh, were... Actually, Newport County... Yeah, we came. We came second. Leeds won. Mm-hmm. They won all the games. Yeah. So we're much more successful than Newport yeah. County Soccer okay. Club. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And Tim had never played foot golf before as well. So uh, okay. you know, we're, we're looking to uh, kick on in the foot golf world. Well, I'll tell you what, if you keep at it... You've missed another pun, Rob. I'm, I'm punning, I'm just banging them out! I've got things to do, I'm focused, I'm a producer, I'm doing all sorts of yeah. stuff here. I mean, I don't, I don't want to hear your crappy puns. <laughs> Look, all right, well, if you want, even you can be a champion of the world. Even though you're a loser, you can still be the champion of the world. Don't anyone let them tell you that it's overproduced. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Friday night performance from Rob. So that was all me, by the way. That yeah, was me singing and fantastic. playing all the instruments. Thank you very oh, much. I'm a genius. You are. The, that was you're a, part-time. You're a genuine Phil yeah. Collins. Although I actually couldn't hit the high notes, so Carl had to double up. Oh, did he? Good on Carl. Right. We have yeah. met Carl. Yeah. That yeah, was so much better than Roger Federer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment, yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, some sort of compliment. It's like you're definitely better yeah, than yeah. Paul Gascoigne. It's like saying, "Hey, you beat Newport <laughs> County on the weekend." Yeah. Right <laughs> yes. So this new segment, basically, there's some sports out there that you, from a zero base, mm. could become a world champion without trying. Me and Rob were part of a team that got to the quarterfinals of the World Marbles Championships. Mm-hmm. Rob himself, as an individual, got to the quarterfinal of the World Egg Jarping Championships. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I saw uh, Stilton rolling the other day. There you and go. And it was revealed it Stilton. wasn't even Stilton. Oh, my word. It was a piece of wood painted white. Oh, More yes. fake soft. Used. Yes. There's a wheel of still. That's so, part, that should be part of the test of the yeah, sport. That's it. <laughs> so there are sports out there that have genuine world championships Mm -hmm. what have you targeted this is a beauty this is the cycling roll off world championships cycling roll off roll off cycling world championships they hold it in Bundanoon in New South Wales okay they put you on even here in Australia people Australia Australia. if you want to be a world champion this should be on your list Mm -hmm. so there's even two chances you become a world champion if you can find where Bundanoon exactly. is. Well, that's, <laughs> that's half the battle. Basically, you sit on a bike and you ride it down a hill. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> 
<laughs> the creativity blows I my mind. I, so, I, don't, I don't. There's know. two chances that illustrates Australian mentality yep. and creativity this is and it. where they can go. So your two chances are they should be doing this in the Tour de France. <laughs> oh, it should be just well, downhill all the way. Well, did you, you see? start at the top of the mountain? You finish <laughs> at the bottom. That's right. How good would that be? Do you see? Actually, they were going to have a jersey in the Giro Italia that's on right now mm. for the descenders. So whoever could get down the mountains the quickest, they were going to be. I am loving it. it. Yeah, but they kicked it out because it was too dangerous. People might die. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so now, how high is this hill? What, what, is there one hill? Any hill? There's one hill, yeah. right? I imagine it's probably it has to be the same two one. two kilometres. Oh, no, it's quite, yeah. I don't think it's even steep. It's just a gradual decline. And can you increase your speed by pedaling? No, no, it's a roll-off. <laughs> <laughs> There's no skill whatsoever, just, no, apart from the fear factor. Apart from fear factor. So there's two chances to become a world champion. One is the quickest. Two is the furthest you can roll down the hill. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This is we genuine. saw a lot of stupid shit. We did see months. a lot of stupid, stupid stuff. <laughs> so, Saturday the 11th of November, Bundanoo, New South Wales. It's the World Cycling Roll-Off Championships. And you too could be a world champion. Is there specifications on your bike? No, you can ride any bike any you like. Any bike. Yep. You generally that is, ride... That is a great idea, See, running it on... All of a sudden you... Remembrance, remembrance yes, Day. Right. November 11th. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Normally you do a minute silence. Yeah, so yeah. I imagine anyone watching that sport, yeah. it would just be an hour of stunned silence. Yeah. Well, people might even die during the, the sport. <laughs> yes. And then they, can, then they can remember them an hour later. They will lose the will to live Except just watching it. Right. This is the quote from their website. There is nothing quite like the buzz of rolling faster than any other rider to the finish line. That's it. That's all i got to say. So they're actually not allowed to pedal? No. <laughs> you're not allowed to pedal. Well, it's a surely then, you, as if you're the fattest, you'll win. This is it. So the key is, so training is actually eat, drink lots of <laughs> booze, get as fat as you can. Hey, no, but have a streamlined back. <laughs> this is... this is <laughs> Shave a, your back. <laughs> this is the crunch. The roll-off is perhaps the great leveller in cycling. Fitness plays little part and is one of the few sports where men and women can compete on an equal footing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Pro-feminist. Whilst body plus bike mass is generally accepted to improve chances in the distance event, sleekness and aerodynamics play a key role in the Mm. shorter, fastest format. It is truly a sport for the narrow... The wide what? and you? anyone in between. <laughs> Good. Cycling roll off world championships. Okay. Anyone can be a world champion. So I suggest the training regime for this to be most successful. First of all, as uh, Tim said, shave your back. If you're a woman, you won't have to worry about that, I'd hope. Could, could you wear a Kathy Freeman speed suit? Yeah, I reckon go for that option. That'll yeah. that'll keep it in. I look good tight. in that full length lycra. Do you? I've, I'd be dubious about that. <laughs> yes. I dare. The streamlined I've, helmet. I didn't Ooh. like much in the hotel room. You used to sit there in your underpants. It was horrific. Uh, I think uh, eating lots of burgers. Um, I'd suggest and, removing the pedals. They just slow you down. Yeah. Mm. Stream one leg, the bike. Leg trailing. That's what you got to do. You need yeah. to be like Superman. <laughs> get a carbon fiber bike and just go for it. There's got to be some other little thing you can do to get I'm sure there is. On that. You could hide like a little dwarf under your, under your <laughs> t-shirt. You Kiwis Something and your like. dwarfs. I'll tell you. It's a, <laughs> just to get some extra weight. It's an obsession. <laughs> oh, great. So, well, um, that's how to become a champion of the world. That's it. That's it. We're going to do you. more of these. I've got loads, as you well know. <laughs> it's how to become a champion of the world. Just turn up and go for it. Yeah, like we can do like it. we nearly did. Self belief. What else we got, Rob? You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. The facts of life. There's a time you gotta go and show you grow, and now you know about the facts of life. The facts of life. When the world never sees. Tim, when I tell people I got sponsored to come here and play cricket, you know, I say I'm from Wales. Somebody sponsored me to come and play cricket. How did you find, obviously, being in Wales and playing cricket? Because when I was growing up, this is a long time ago, obviously the football and rugby seasons used to be September to April. And now that's now it's all August and most of May. So cricket season is very narrow. In Wales, probably the same in New Zealand, Rob, the rugby players and the soccer players all play cricket. And now that's not a possibility. So cricket numbers have kind of declined drastically over the past 10 15 years but cricket's still really you know it's a really strong sport in wales funnily enough and nobody seems to know about it but the main thing that's happening in new zealand we can take a moment to be serious yeah I mean, I think every now and again that. yeah um the fact that there's so much money in all this ipl and all this sort yeah. of stuff sportsmen and athletes who generally used to go to rugby union and play for the all blacks yep. uh now staying in cricket 
because just they can see a longer career yeah. and all that sort it's of stuff. It's a good thing. So 2020 is mm. helping numbers. Yeah, as much as I don't like it on an international level, but I do like it, uh, the little competitions, the big yeah. bash and all that stuff. It's entertaining stuff. So uh, what are your thoughts on that one, uh, Tim? <laughs> I think, well, Australia's got it right. Mm-hmm. We go, here's a footy season six months of the year. Here's a cricket season six months of the year. Mm. So if you are an amateur player, you can play both sports. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you're a pro, you've got a five-month pre-season. That's fair enough. But, yeah, it's shocking that players have got to make a choice in the UK. Do you play the winter sport or do you play the summer sport? Mm-hmm. They should be able to do both. Well, because Elise Perry was doing that, wasn't she? She was playing for the Well, Australian she still does, yeah. She, she still, still does yeah, that. She still does. She manages Jeez, in a time. Hard. Well, the other oh, thing oh. is there's a, there's a few cricketers, well, basketball and netball, they're all vying for the same thing. So, you know, there's athletes now trying to play AFL women's because there's a bit of money in there. You know, and there's a few basketballers trying to play AFL as well. So people are fighting for the talent pool mm. because all of a sudden there's a little bit of money in women's sport. And then the other problem in the UK as well is that when we go to drinks early in the season or late in the season, instead of talking about the opposition batsman and how you're going to get him out, they're saying, what's the scores in the Premier League? Oh, yeah, see. How do you feel about... Switching off from cricket and Mm warm-ups. Get out the soccer ball. Mm -hmm. Let's kick a soccer ball around as a warm-up for cricket. Well, I don't mind that, to be honest. But when have you ever seen Manchester United go, let's get the willow out, grab a couple of balls, let's have a hit on the old Trafford ground. How do you feel about the standard of afternoon tea here? here in uh, Australia because I played one game of cricket in London and the afternoon tea I was mind blowing it yes. made me very very happy the only thing was maybe missing was a bit of a cheeky pint to be honest but it wasn't quite you know it was just a low standard of oh, cricket mate, I've played low standards of cricket where it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a given it's a given right one of the defining moments in my decision to move to Brumbo Cricket Club mm. were the, the afternoon was teas the tea. right yeah yep. do it properly Made by Lynn Turner mm-hmm. and her mum every week. So every the, two weeks, you're guaranteed a yeah. really good afternoon tea. What was the signature sandwich or the signature something that set it apart from everything, well, everything we, else? You just had the works. No matter yeah. what your diet, what you wanted, it was there. Mm. So you'd have hot, freshly done pizzas oh. to the minute. They'd know if the opposition was nine wickets down, okay, pizzas need to go on at uh, this particular moment because mm, we're going to have an early tea. That's taking it serious, isn't it? Yeah. Or they'd think, hang on, they're going to bat the overs out, just hang fire on the pizzas mm. for a moment. <coughs> really good chicken selects. Yeah. Nice Jeez. salads, yeah. really good sandwiches. New potatoes with melted butter oh, on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bit yeah. of mint, and, mint sauce yeah. over the top. How, yeah. how did I forget my favourite mm. dessert, Battenberg cakes? Oh, really? Battenberg? That's like the four, the four, it's in quarters, pink and, pink oh, and ye- right, yellow, right, right, and it's right, right. kind of... Bit Marzi, of icing. Marzi pan, pan or, icing. Yeah, icing. Yeah. yeah. My mum used to go for the bacon and egg pie, make the bacon and egg pie, and oh, bring, bring really? that in, and yep. my, my brother was very good at cricket, and he was in the first eleven and stuff, I was not so good. She once used it to try and bribe the coach to try and get me in the team. Oh, really? Yeah, didn't, I'll do your teas. Didn't work. She wow. still ate the pies. That would have swung I, me. I, we used to play against a club called Canesham, where Marcus Triscoth made his name grew up as a kid the guy that looked after their club he was 25 stone but they had the best tea of all time he had warm donuts bags of little bags of jelly tots and things but it's starting to sound like a band writer it was was awesome yeah yeah only green peanut you used to know when you saw the fixture list of the start of the season you think oh We've got Kanchim away this year. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. yep, definitely be playing. I'll be informed for that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you play them in a cup match, you might get them away. Or if you draw them at home, you say, like, oh, can we switch this? Yeah. When I was playing uh, in uh, East Anglia Premier League, the ECB used to give you £3,000, I think, a season. Now, normally it's for junior development or equipment, covers, new sight screens, whatever. Madness. Madness. Norwich used to, used to use it for outside caterers for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Last day of the season, they they made a tradition, and hope, hopefully they're still doing it. And there was some uh, Jamaican or Barbadian, Bayesian uh, ladies locally, and mm. the last day of the se- last home game of the season, flying fish, flying fish for cricket lunch, flying I, I was fish. Thinking, I was going to think it'd be like sort of fried chicken. No, and no, stuff no like they that. used to do yeah. the flying fish, yeah. and a much better nickname than Queen Bees. Yeah, the flying fish, the flying fish. Still can't hold a bat. No, <laughs> very <laughs> good if it rains though. Yeah, yeah. No, I very much enjoyed that game. The one game I played in London. Yeah. I'd been uh, wedding the night before, actually. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and they rolled you out well, for a cricket well, match. Well boozed and then... Uh, got one of the greatest did sporting did a, did a, vendors. Did a song with the band. As well? Yeah, yeah, did a song with the band. Yeah, yeah. What'd you do? Um, I did uh, Desire by You 2 took, oh, took the vocals, really? belted it out. Oh. oh my, all, uh, the wedding was half Irish. They're all like... 
He did a lot better job than that fucking Bono. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they call him in Ireland as well. And they actually had a successful uh, evening with the young lady. So that was uh, all very, oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. And then got up and uh, had opened the batting. Yeah. And I was smashing it actually. I was twinning on and out. I had about five straight fours. And then I missed one and wrenched my shoulder really oh, badly and it. then couldn't swing the bat anymore. So, Tim, highlights of your. Because obviously you've moved back to Melbourne now. You're coaching the Stangs. Yeah. Um, hi- what's Do your. Do you call them the Stangs? <laughs> The tangs. The it's, tangs. Not, oh, it's not going to work for me. Nah. <laughs> nah. It's going to be girls. Yeah. What's your one cricketing highlight or one memory you're going to bring back to Australia? I think being banned from the relegation decider against Pont Blythen for commenting on a planning application would have to be my abiding memory of cricket in Wales. You got banned. It did. Yes. Social media. Yeah. He was a- I, I was the leading run scorer for Brumbo mm. and their wicketkeeper. We were in a crunch match against Pont Blythen, who Collis King, the West Indian, oh, yeah. used to play for. The chairman of the North Wales League was also the chairman of Pont Blythen. And he thought, if we lose this game to Pont Blythen, we'll be relegated instead of them. I know. Let's troll a few of their players' <laughs> Facebook pages <laughs> and see if they've said anything controversial. What? Are you were having a laugh. No, I've- so I was banned for a week without anyone knowing that the hearing was taking place. But this was... The other controversial thing is this is your last game in Wales or supposedly your last yes. game in Wales as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, this would have been my last game. So I thought it was the perfect send-off because we ended up winning the game. <laughs> Our captain needing two off the last ball of the match facing their West Indian pro. Mm. Pops it in the air, straight to one of the Pomp Blythen committee members' mm. sons, straight down his throat. He's going to catch it. West Indian pro so excited. Off comes the shirt. He's waving it around over his head, doing a lap of honour. Meanwhile, sadly, the ball bounced off the player's chest, Mm. ran away. Captain completed two. Thanks for coming. You're going down. Got him. There I did. So Tim's Tim's controversial Facebook post was about um, a village club getting a... Uh, a new pavilion. I secured them a new pavilion. Whereas this right. Pont Blethyn didn't get the pavilion. Well, it was Harden who didn't get the oh, pavilion. Well, okay. But you can see why Pont Blythin was so about annoyed that. about this post. Yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Banned. Yes, Banned that's it. Nor- Northup followed on my, my plan with the new pavilion mm. for Castle Allen Cricket Club, which yeah. I secured by allowing two houses to be built on some council land. Profits from that go towards the new pavilion. Northup thought, that's a great idea. Let's speak to a property developer put in an application for a new pavilion. So they put in an application for 91 houses. Oh. And that surprisingly was thrown out yeah, by yeah. the council. That's just a little bit more than two. Yes. Who was the person that delivered the, the, delivered the news that you were banned? Like, uh, how, I only how, found how, out, how did it, we found out how did it go through rumour on the Thursday night at training. So no one actually personally told you? No. The captain well, ran you over to me. just turned up and just gone, oh. They'll be told us. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, the fear was that even if I had yeah. turned up and watched the game, the Pont Blythen chairman, a.k.a. North Wales League chairman, mm. would have said, Newhouse has watched the game, we'll deduct five points <laughs> off you, and, oh, you've been relegated. This is utterly mental. This, this, is, this, like, is, this, this is, is like North Wales for you, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> what is going We're on? We used to it over the years. Well, you've been quite happy to sort of wave farewell and uh, on your bike. Yeah, well, it's indeed. Coming. Welcome yes. to Australia. I, I think my lack of popularity... Now stemmed back to myself and the Menai Bridge captain going to the league right. three or four years earlier mm. and saying, winning draws, losing draws, these are ridiculous. They're ruining cricket. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, we're going to start a players' strike. We're all going to go and form our own clubs and pull out of the Premier League and you'll stop getting your invites to Lords. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah. the uh, league said, came back to us a couple of weeks later when they realised the strike was going to happen, and said, I'll tell you what, boys, we'll allow you to have one day cricket and you can stay a Premier League. Oh, mm-hmm. there you go. So we Player said, power. thanks very much. Yeah. That used to be the most frustrating thing playing Premier League over there is you start at 10, 30, 11 o'clock and you could bowl your ring out. You bowl, I think there was a maximum of 69 overs in the first innings and you would bat 69 overs bowl if you could. Bowl your ring out. Yeah, right. yeah, generally. Okay. And then um, you could then bat in the second innings and you could just block everything out and go for the losing draw. If you want to play 50 over games, proper cricket, go to the North Wales Premier League. We're mm. the only one that does it. I'll be sure to get involved yeah. at some point. Yeah. bit yeah. late yes. for you. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very, very good. What, what's uh, so this week and next week in the life of Beefy? What's coming up? What have you got? Uh... Well, I'm going to the BMR on Saturday. 
Yeah, definitely going. I'm definitely going. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be fun to see. Where's Ashburn? How far is it? No, not that far. That know. was what ruined yeah. the uh, world champion or the world record marathon bid for that guy. Two hours mm. and twenty five seconds. Yeah. he had twenty six beers. He should have had. Tim, thanks so much for being involved. Beautiful. Uh, Thank you, Tim. Evening. We really Beautiful appreciate to be it, yeah. here. Looking forward to the invite onto SEN. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, we're there, yeah, 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 yeah. October. It's a long way away. We want me not to talk as much rubbish. Or oh, was that the whole point? I think it is. Yeah. I'll I think that's why they like us. This is, to coin a phrase, a show about nothing. Yeah. Seinfeld. No, it's about sport. <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> Keep telling you. <laughs> Three, six, five days of sport. We'll see you next week. Yeah.